morning and a very warm welcome to Kegworth Baptist Church. Thank you for joining us this morning. Our message today will be brought to us by Steve Cooper and he's going to be speaking on Psalm 33. So let's start this morning with a song of praise. All of you that are righteous, shout up for joy for what the Lord has done. Praise him, all you that obey him. Give thanks to the Lord with harps, sing to him with stringed instruments, sing a song to him, play the harp with skill and shout with joy. Let's start this morning with a song. The splendor of the King Of the majesty That all the earth rejoice All the earth rejoice He wraps Himself in light the darkness tries to hide trembles at his voice and trembles at his voice how great is our God sing with me how great is our God oh see how great how great is our God Before we hand over to Steve, let's take some time to pray together. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for our world and we thank you for places around the globe that live in fear or poverty, famine or war. We just pray that you be with all of those people today. 
Lord, we pray for our country and with the current leadership battles going on for the Conservative Party, we just pray that whoever comes to power will make the right choices for everybody that lives in this country. We pray for the situation with the hot weather and whilst it's been really enjoyable to have some sunshine, we pray for the harvest, we pray for the farmers, we pray for animals and people that struggle with health in this hot weather. Just please be with all of them, Lord, and keep everybody safe. We pray for people in our families, our friends and our community and everybody here in the Kegworth Baptist Fellowship, that you be with them, especially those who are in hospital or poorly or struggling with bereavement at this time. We pray for everybody that we love and we pray that you be with them always. And let us join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. But lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. I'm now going to hand you over to Steve Cooper for this morning's message. Thank you, Steve. It's good to be with you this morning on YouTube and have a chance to share a little bit about God's Word. I want to read this morning from Psalm 33. The psalmist says this, Sing joyfully to the Lord, you righteous. It's fitting for the upright to praise him. Praise the Lord with the harp. Make music to him on the ten-string lyre. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully and shout for joy. For the word of the Lord is right and true. He is faithful in all he does. The Lord loves righteousness and justice, and the earth is full of his unfailing love. By the word of the Lord the heavens were made, their starry host by the breath of his mouth. He gathers the waters of the sea into jars, he puts the deep into storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord, let all the people of the world revere him. For he spoke, and it came to be, he commanded, and it stood firm. The Lord foils the plans of the nations, he thwarts the purposes of the peoples. But the plans of the Lord stand firm forever, the purposes of his heart through all generations. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people he chose for his inheritance. From heaven the Lord looks down and sees all mankind. From his dwelling place he watches all who live on earth, he who forms the heart of all who considers everything they do. No king is saved by the size of his army. No warrior escapes by his great strength. A horse is a vain hope for deliverance. Despite all its great strength, it cannot save. But the eyes of the Lord are on those who fear him, on those whose hope is in his unfailing love, to deliver them from death and keep them alive in famine. We wait in hope for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. In him our hearts rejoice, for we trust in his holy name. May your unfailing love be with us, Lord, even as we put our hope in you. May God bless that reading from his word. This morning, just for a few minutes, about the fact that why saints should rejoice in our God. The first few verses of this psalm make it very clear that God expects his saints to rejoice in him. He expects his saints to be those who sing his praise, who celebrate his goodness, who shout out the wonders of their God. I don't think that means we make an awful lot of noise, but I think it means that by our living and by our speaking, we declare something of the greatness of our God. And that is what the psalmist is saying here. He's, in verse 3, he says we should sing a new song. 
I don't necessarily think that means that we need to come up with a new song every week. But I think what it means is we need to think about what we're saying. If you sing a new song, I don't know about you, but I really have to focus on the words, fit the words into the music and follow it. And it means probably a bit more to me than a song I've sung 30 or 40 times before. I almost know the words and it just trips off my tongue. So the psalmist here is saying, think about your praise of God. Think about what you're saying, why you're praising him. We're called to praise him. And the psalmist said, first of all, in verses four to nine, he says we should rejoice in his word. The psalmist said his word is precious. It's right. The, the idea of uprightness and straightness and correctness. The word of God is not a lie. It is truth. It is ultimate truth. And without it, we're going to fall into error. We as God's people should value his word. We should read his word. We should allow his word to dictate the way that we live, the things that we do, the places we go, the thoughts that we think. So we need to thank God for his word, for his written word, for his spoken word here in scripture. We should also thank him for the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the living word, the very word of God demonstrated in human form. This word is personal. It shows us a personal picture of God. You know, God is so awesome that when he tries to explain himself, how is he going to do it? Someone said it's like us trying to communicate with the ants in an ant nest. We're so far above them, so much bigger than them. There's no way we can communicate with them. And there is that sense of which God is awesome and great and powerful and so far above us and yet God has written down in his word and told us how he is steadfast how he loves righteousness and justice how he is faithful to his word and that challenges us it's a personal picture of our God that we find in scripture it's a powerful word the psalmist said he spoke and the heavens came into being he spoke and contracted the seas and put them in jars as the psalmist said. It is a powerful word. The word of God still has power. We should never forget that. But the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is the discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Hebrews 4.12. It reminds us that God's word uh, reacts and acts within our life as we read it and as we seek to understand it. His word is powerful. His word is personal. And then we should rejoice in his will. In verses 10 uh, to 12, it speaks about the will of God. It says, but the plans of the Lord stand firm forever. His, the purposes of his heart through all generations it says God's will will be done. You know, in the Lord's Prayer, when we pray for his will to be done on earth as it is in heaven, there is a sense in which God is working out his plans and his purposes. It is dominant. No one can stand against him. What he has planned, what he has purposed will take place. His will is not a dominant, it's determined. The things that occur in this world are not by chance. It is not just one evil man having a, a moment's uh, madness as we look at uh, the situation in Ukraine. But somewhere in all of this, God is working out his plans and his purposes so that somewhere in all of this, God will produce what he intended. His will is determined. It is sure. The psalmist mentions that the nations that are blessed are the ones who honour God. His will is desirable. We should desire to walk in accordance to his will. We should desire to fulfil his plans and his purposes for our life. So we should rejoice in the word of God. We should rejoice in the will of God. And we should rejoice 
in his watching. His watching is absolute. Our God sees everything. The things that we think we've hidden, the things that other people think that nobody knows about, God knows all about them. He's seen them. He's understood what's going on. In, in Proverbs 15, uh, Solomon says, The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. He sees us. He knows our thoughts before we think them. He even knows what's behind our actions when we do them. He's watching us and he cannot be fooled. He cannot be hoodwinked. We can't pull the wool over God's eyes, as it were. He's watching us. But you know, he's watching us and he's aware of what's going on in our life. God watches the heathens as they make their plans and set their armies in arrays. He sees their vain efforts to alter his plan and to seek dominion. But his plans will come to fruition. He's watching. He's aware of what's going on. But here's the good bit. He's watching us in love. Verses 18 and 19. But the eyes of the Lord are on those who fear him, on those whose hope is in his unfailing love. He's watching us out of love. He cares about you and me. He knows exactly what's going on in our life and his plans and his purposes will be fulfilled. We should hope in him. We should hope in the one who's watching us in love and compassion and mercy. But that's what he's seeking to demonstrate in our life. The eyes, are of, the, the eyes of the Lord are on those who fear him. He watches over us. What does he say to people in Matthew's Gospel? He says, our father knows when one sparrow falls to the ground. How much more important are we than sparrows? Our God is watching us and he loves us. And so what does the psalmist say at the end? We wait in hope for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. Friends, this is the kind of God that we worship. This is the kind of God that we should celebrate. This is the kind of God we should rejoice in, the God who watches, the God whose word we have, a picture of himself, the God whose will will be done throughout this world, who will bring this whole creation to fulfilment and one day wrap it all up and create a new heaven and a new earth where there is no sin, There is no sorrow, there is no death, there is no sickness, a place where forever we are with our Saviour, with our Lord. So I guess I need to ask you, are you really praising God? Are we like the psalmist? Are we prepared to shout out the joy of our God? Do we really get excited about worshipping our God? The psalmist did. And the psalmist wrote this song to encourage us so that we can rest in his word. We can rest in his will. We can rest in the fact that he's watching us. And as our trust deepens and our ability to rest in him grows stronger, we should be those whose life is marked out with praise. We should be those who sing joyfully to the Lord. We should be those who shout out his praise and his glory. Friends, I trust that something I've shared with you this morning in these few moments will have encouraged you. This is the kind of God we have and this is the kind of God that we worship. Let's remember that and let's put worship high on our priority. Let's just pray, shall we? Father God, we thank you for your word and we thank you that your word challenges us about the way that we worship you. Father, I pray that each and every one of us would be those who will joyfully worship our God. We will understand and celebrate the goodness of our God as we read his word, as we understand more about his love and his compassion and his grace in his word. Help us, Heavenly Father, to celebrate that as we look and we see that his will is going to be accomplished in all places at all time. 
Father, we thank you for the plan that you have for our individual lives and thank you that you will bring that to fruition. We thank you also, Heavenly Father, that as we read your word and as we think about your will being accomplished in and through our lives, uh, we can also celebrate the fact that you watch over us. Oh, Father, thank you for that, that you watch over us to keep us from harm, to demonstrate your love to us, to be merciful to us, to be compassionate towards us, to cheer us when we're sad, to strengthen us when we're weak. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for watching over us. May we forever be your thankful people. We ask this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Steve, for your word this morning, and thank you for your encouragement. If there's anybody that needs any prayerful or practical support, please do contact us, and we will do our very best to help you. And let us finish this morning by blessing one another with the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen.